Hi guys, my name is Imogen, I'm 19 years old and I'm currently on a gap year. With A-level results day right around the corner, a lot of people are going to be deciding very soon that they want to take a gap year. And so today we're going to be talking all about how you can plan your gap year. But because I haven't talked to my channel at all about what I did on my gap year from the very start of my gap year to the very end of my gap year, I thought I would just cover that really quickly now. So first off, once I'd finished my A-levels, I got a job for six weeks and through that I earned roughly £1,500 and that was the main bulk of finances that helped with my gap year. So once I'd finished my summer job, I'd worked for six weeks, then we had results day. Around about the time of results day, I decided that I was going to be taking a gap year and I also had a Discover EU free interrail pass. So I knew that one of the first things I wanted to do was to go interrailing. Interrailing was meant to last three weeks, but it ended up only being 11 days. And if you want to know the full story of all of that, then I do have a video all about that on my channel already. So I came home after 11 days and I spent a further three weeks at home in England. In this time, I saw my friends. And during that time, I also applied to ICS. So ICS stands for International Citizen Service. And it is a volunteering programme that is 90% funded by the British government. It's run through different organisations such as Voluntary Services Overseas or VSO. Um, I think Restless Development do it and there's another organisation, but I can't quite remember them. I am going to be filming a whole video about applying to ICS, my application process, selection, all that sort of thing. But for this video, all you need to know is that my application process and selection days and all of that sort of thing happened in these three weeks. So after three weeks at home, I then headed out to Germany. So this is mid-September all the way through to the start of December. So I was there for about two and a half months, I think. I did have a quick break in the middle of that to come home for training for my ICS placement. And I, again, I will talk about that all in another video, which is going to be all about ICS. So if you're interested, definitely give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below letting me know that you do want to hear all about ICS. Um, and I would definitely, definitely do that video on it. And whilst I was out in Germany, I also had my injections for Nepal. If you're interested, I will talk all about this in this other video, which I'm going to be doing very, very soon. So hit that subscribe button down below and turn on that bell thing so that you are notified every time I post. I came back to the UK in mid-December. I then had five weeks at home. So I had Christmas at home, which was really nice. I got to see all of my family, catch up with my friends when they were back from uni. And then on the 14th of January, I went out to Nepal to do my ICS placement. Unfortunately, coronavirus meant that we had to come home from our placement 10 days early, which really was not a big deal in the grand scheme of things. We were meant to be out in Nepal for two and a half to three months, I think, and we ended up doing just over two months. So we really weren't cut short at all. But whilst I was out there, I was starting to think about my next steps because I hadn't actually planned the next part of my gap year. I had a friend who I'd met whilst I was au pairing in Germany who lived in Ukraine, who I really, really wanted to go and visit. So I was starting to look at flights over there. But as I saw that the coronavirus situation was getting worse and worse and worse, I was holding off booking those flights just in case. That is obviously a definite pro of not planning out your whole gap year as soon as you know that you're having one is that you can obviously change your plans. And particularly during Corona times, that is going to be so, so important for the next year. And in a minute, I'm going to get onto my tips for how to plan your gap year, which are going to be specific to this year. I completely forgot to mention, but whilst I was back in the UK at Christmas, I applied for a summer job. It was the same summer job as I'd done the previous year. And when I came back from Nepal, unfortunately, I then found out that that had been cancelled. And that brings us to where I started my channel. So you kind of know what my day in the life looked like as a gap year student who couldn't actually travel anywhere or do much in the UK. Like a lot of people my age and a lot of students, I didn't have much to do during lockdown. I did try and get a job, but unfortunately that wasn't successful. However, when airlines started to fly again on the 1st of July, I went straight out to Germany to go and au pair with my family again, because that was obviously something that I was able to do reasonably safely. I came back from that on the 25th of July, so I did nearly a month there. And then I had a week at home. It was my brother's 18th birthday, saw some family obviously from a distance. And for the past week, I have been out in Germany again, staying with a friend and just kind of having a holiday, meeting up with her. And that was really, really nice. So that brings us up to now. I do have some exciting things happening in the next few weeks, but at the moment they're not set in stone. So I'm obviously not going to tell you all about them just in case they don't happen. So let's move on to the tips. The first tip I'm going to give you is do not worry if things change. Obviously, at the moment, things are going to change anyway because of coronavirus. From one day to the next, the countries you can go to change. The restrictions change in the UK, the restrictions change around the world. I can guarantee you now that one thing in your gap year is going to go wrong, whether it is restrictions with coronavirus or whether it's you actually find that you don't like solo traveling, which was kind of what I did. 
or if you find that your job gets cancelled because at the moment obviously the economy is still getting going again I can guarantee something is going to go wrong but do not worry it's just about how you deal with those things other opportunities will inevitably come along my next tip is to block out your gap year in chunks. So I worked kind of in three month chunks. So I had from the end of my A-levels until September. So I only did interrailing and working in that time. That was what was in that chunk. Then I had my chunk of time whilst I was in Germany. That was roughly three months. Then I had roughly three months in Nepal. And then I was going to do roughly three months where I traveled Europe and worked again the following year. And that enabled me to get settled into a place, but also make sure that I was still doing quite a lot of different things through my gap year. Three months, particularly with volunteering and things, does give you enough time to settle into the community and make sure that you're making a meaningful difference. And I think if you are thinking of doing any volunteering, particularly abroad during your gap year, that is something you need to be really, really careful of. So if you see those volunteer programmes that are for like one week or two weeks, you really need to think to yourself, how much is that actually going to benefit the community and how much is that just for my own personal benefit? Also, blocking it out in three or four month chunks kind of gives you a chance to do lots of different things throughout the year. You can go out to one country and learn a language, you can go out to another one and volunteer. That's not to say that doing one year of something can be really beneficial. If there are financial reasons why you can't travel, then working for a whole year might be a really, really good thing to do. Or for example, if you're going into medicine, I know that work experience is really, really important. And so that might be something else that you want to do for a whole year as opposed to three or four months. I just think if you have the opportunity to travel and you have the opportunity to do lots of different things, then why not take it? It's just going to make the most of your gap year. My next tip is to work out how you're going to finance your gap year. There are definitely ways to do a gap year on a budget, like doing ICS. That was a really reasonable um, volunteering experience. Doing work away is another really low cost option for traveling. But also, if you do want to get a job, I would say don't see a job as just a means to an end. You are learning skills through a job and that actually will be seen as really beneficial when you come to use your gap year to apply for jobs or apply for university. Additionally, if you are looking into volunteering, then look into grants and bursaries. I actually received a grant of £400 towards my £800 I needed to raise to go out to Nepal. So it would just be a shame if you didn't find out about one of those before you went. My next tip is to plan so that there is one thing that is the highlight of your gap year. So for me personally, this was Nepal. I knew I wanted to do ICS from when I decided to have a gap year. And so I had obviously had to sort out all of the application and the jabs and all of that sort of stuff before I actually went out to Nepal. And so by planning this in advance and knowing that that was going to be the big thing I really wanted to do in my gap year, I was able to make sure that actually happened. So for you, it might be, I don't know, working for nine months and then you're going traveling around Asia for three and that's the one thing you're really looking forward to. Next tip is to build on skills that you already had. I already had GCSE German, so it made sense for me to go and do work away in Germany and not, say for example, Spain, where I knew literally none of the language. Additionally, whether you are able to travel, whether there are financial barriers to you traveling, I think it is really important for you to volunteer at some point. You can volunteer in your local community. There are hospices, hospice shops. There are so many different volunteering opportunities in your local community, as well as doing volunteering abroad. And I think it's really important whilst you're having a gap year, you're having time out of education to give something back to your local or global community. The next tip is purely on a practical note, make sure if you are planning to travel that you have renewed your passport before you go. Obviously at the moment, travel is not really properly open, so you're probably not traveling. It's a really good time to get your passport sorted out and so it doesn't expire in the middle of your gap year because that could cause some major problems. The next tip links to the one above about how you're actually gonna finance your gap year. Also work out how personal finance works. What is the best travel credit card if you're, or travel debit card, travel money card, I don't know what it's called. But anyway, what is the best travel card to take when you're going abroad? Have you got a debit card so that you, when you get a job, you can get the money paid into your debit account? All these sorts of things are really, really important for you to look into now. If you can get your personal finances sorted before you go to university or whilst you've got a little bit more time in your hands, it's just going to save you a whole lot more hassle when you're older. If you have deferred your place and you're planning to go to university next year, then I would urge you to go and get a student bank account set up. It's really quick and easy to do. I applied online. Um, I think it's the same for all the different banks at the moment, but don't count me on that one. Another thing to do whilst you're on your gap year and whilst you're planning your gap year is to look into any skills that you want to learn over the course of the year. So for example, if you didn't have time to learn to drive during sick form or you didn't have the money or anything like that, then this is a perfect time for you to learn to drive and get those skills under your belt. 
Additionally, updating your CV is a really useful thing that you can do. And there are so many other skills that you can try and develop. And finally, whilst you're working, if you've got the weekends off or if you're just having a bit of time in the UK, then go and visit your friends at university. It's going to give you an insight into what university life is like. And I think it can be really easy to lose touch with your friends, particularly when they all go off to university and they've got their new friends and you're still at home on your gap year. Um, you don't have the same kind of circle of friends around you. So it's really important you go and visit them, that you keep in touch with all of them so that you don't get isolated and lonely during your gap year. So that is the end of this video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then hit that like button down below, subscribe to my channel and leave me a comment letting me know what your plans are for your gap year because I'm just quite a nosy person. And I'd really like to know. I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you next time with a new video. Bye.